Welcome back, everyone, to another Zero K Exhibition match replay. I remain your host, Dominic, or Chad, if you're whichever you prefer. And we have another match, 3v3. Both of these were actually Palladium matches from a while ago, and both were requested. Though I don't think we were requested by anyone who actually played in them. I think they were just requested because they were cool-looking matches that the person liked. So, we have, over in the Northeast, Flumby Cabin Boy and Steel Blue. Up against Masper Anarchid and India Ray. Masper and Anarchid going for a rapid crab. This is... Being Living Lands, it is a very small map for 3v3. Kind of surprised it was played in the first place, but anyway. Yeah, crab coming out right from the right off the bat. And it will be spotted, too, because there's nothing really stopping it from being spotted. Dark coming in here does see... Oh, hey, we're going for a crab rush, are we? This side, though, what we're going to see... We're seeing changes in what people are building. No, Mass Fencer's not a bad idea to begin with, so yeah. The only thing I could think of would maybe be to build an imp. Something to just, you know, stun it out, I guess. Alright, well... Since I'm not quite sure what to go for... Okay, Racketeer, not a bad idea. Again, to me, the biggest thing is trying to make sure the crab doesn't really get a chance to sit down. But I guess Racketeer isn't a bad idea either. I'm just thinking if you stun it out, then it's there's not much I can do. A crab up, dropping in Jump and Cloak as well, once that uh, was done. And now for the crab. Time for the walk of shame. The crab slowly moves over to their opponent's base. Oh, Cabin Boy being supported. Ah, I see. Cabin Boy being supported so they can start building up a bunch of racketeers. That makes sense. Again, I see I see the idea for the racketeers. I still think stunning is a little more useful because the thing is with crabs, their HP or no, does it affect it? I'm pretty sure their armor affects the way that they're affected by status conditions. Even though their HP doesn't actually go to twelve thousand, it I'm pretty sure still affects how much things like disarm, stun, and slow impact them. I'd have to double check on that. I'm I'm actually not 100% sure. I've never tested that. In all the time I've played this game, I've never actually tested whether or not crabs get affected by statuses differently based on whether they're, they're holed up or not. Still, the rest of the support forces are starting to struggle. Placeholder coming in here to try to help get rid of some of these glaives, but... Not really helping. Not really helping. The crab can't hit that low. Still, the high crab is getting the pressure in. There is the one racketeer. No additional racketeers have been completed yet. The doesn't seem to be the focus. The focus seems to be going around the back trying to take out all the forces that will be coming in to support the crab, which is not a bad idea. Just provide a bit of a distraction. Deprive the crab of support forces, but it's not really working. Please coming around the side to take out metal extractors. Just slowing down Northeast expansion, which, to be fair, is actually faster than GBC's. GBC's expansion has been really limited by the fact that they've been focused entirely on the crab. Mass are now finally going over to the southeast side to take some stuff out, but that has not been the primary focus. The primary focus has been this crab rush. Which, to be fair, has been leading to a contain. Flea's able to come in, take out... They took out the metal extractors. They're not able to take out much else, however. But still, the crab managing to continue... To provide support for this really what ends up now being a lotus push and time glaze coming over steel blues commander under some threat they should be fine however not enough glaze came in all at once so the commander won't die to this but they will be softened up i mean if that crab gets one lucky shot they're actually is that gonna be it no that's not it did not die but they are close one more glaive would have actually done it or having pulled the glaives a little more simultaneously would have also done it. But that is going to be Steel Blue's Commander forced away from the expansion, more importantly. So that means that this contain is working. It's working remarkably well. The only thing that's gone outside of it is Plumby's Commander with essentially a defensive setup of their own, but they can't easily get out of there. Phantom Switch trying to deal with the crab more direct, or try to deal with all the support stuff more directly. 
And actually, this is rather clever, setting up all the lotuses. That is blocking the racketeers from hitting the crab. Granted, it is important to get rid of the lotuses too, but the fact is the crab is what's going to be dealing most of the damage, especially now that it's being put on its little spike. And when I say little, I actually mean you know, several meters tall. That, that's not little, I realize, but yeah, that's, that's the crab spike. That is what you do with crabs. You put them on a spike, and then they go, or spire. Put them on a spire, and then they go and do stuff. However, the... Okay, so I think we've confirmed that. No, it does not actually make a difference with them if they're moving. Okay, so crabs do take full damage from status, even if they're they're armored up. Which is actually good to know, because I was thinking for a while that it'd be easier to demonstrate what's going on by having the health the health value change when it goes in and out of siege mode, but if the statuses are affected by its by only its actual listed health value and not by the effective health when you consider armor, then I would say that's actually really good. That's actually then the way it's done, assuming that's the intended part of the design, makes sense. At any rate, the crab is no longer able to do anything. How relevant that'll be is still an open question as the GBC has continued to expand across the map. There, that's the main thing. The crab is a contain tool. It's not meant to kill. It's meant to lock everything else down so that all this expansion can happen behind it, allowing for a larger army to be built behind it, and from there to go in for the final push. So the crab hasn't failed at its objective. It's, it's doing just fine. It's tied up a bunch of resources into racketeers. It's tied up all this army into holding back. It it's allowed for a bunch of defenses and such to be built up front. And again, it's that's the thing. It's just sort of there. It's just doing its thing. India Ray and Flumby's commander getting into a bit of a fight. Looks like Flumby's commander will be in a tighter spot. Pyro's coming in, providing a little bit of advantage over to the GBC in that fight. But India Ray's commander forced to retreat. Back the crab. Some of the disarm has gone away, but more importantly, the crab going off the spire has inspired the rest of the forces for Northeast to push forward. And that is not what they want. Of course, this entire the entire approach is based on the idea that this is a contain. That's the whole point. But crab finding backside of the spire, using that to block off all the racketeer shots. Cleverly done. Still able to do some damage from there, so it's not useless. It's not as good as it was, but it's not useless. However, the Racketeer is clever enough to go around the side to deal with that. Forcing the crab to move once again, and that once again is becoming a major problem. So with that, the that, that contain has been cancelled. It's done. It's over. Now the crab forced to retreat to a better position to work from, but the racketeers already being up is going to be a problem. There isn't a whole lot to actually get rid of the racketeers directly. I mean, this one reaver is doing a lot of work keeping everything alive as far as any potential counter raids go. And at this point, I don't know what's been done, actually. A lot of power production, like GBC has really gone far when it comes to their economy, but they haven't built a lot of an army. This is always the problem when you're dealing with a contain, is that once they are able to break out of the contain, your opponents could have a large enough army they can completely break through and counterattack. Oh, I'm sorry, it was wincing chat. Flumby pointing out that armor actually does affect status effects. Oh, so Rag here just has that high of a disarm chance. Okay, so never mind, armor does affect it. So you could change the HP to reflect what's going on. My bad. I'm sorry. Checked out chat now. But yes, apparently crabs do get affected by armor for statuses. So I guess that means it would just take one racketeer shot to take them out completely, and double check it. Yeah, it would actually. 20, yeah, so yeah, it'd be two shots. They'd be disarmed. All right, that makes sense. Should have checked the actual stat values. That would have answered the question. However, the crab, armor or no, has gone down. Indira's commander looking to soon follow. This is what I mean by you got to be careful when your opponent's army from a contain is able to break out. They are going to be a massive threat. 
Center has been completely wiped out. I really am surprised there wasn't a lot of backup forces behind that crab, especially when it was clear the crab could not hold. I mean, once it got perma stunned, you would think the priority would shift to having a secondary army behind that to deal with all the stuff that had been built up by the Northeast team, but no. That didn't happen at all, and now GBC is scrambling to try to find some way of getting this Northeast army to just go back home. And it doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon. And those Phantoms alone are doing loads of work. Because, you know, you throw lone riots around just trying to deal with raiders flying around the map. The Phantom can just take care of them. You have the commander going to maybe too far forward, maybe being a little foolish with their positioning. Yeah, the Phantom takes them out. Now the commander is forced to retreat. Actually, for that matter, where are the commanders? Okay, they've all... Again, they've all been forced to retreat. Any race commander fall, fell back. The other commanders are just in this giant forest of defenses because that just makes it easier for the Phantom not to hit them. Now the contain is basically reversed. Kara does have to be taken around the fire, though. I mean, that will spot the Phantom, so there is that. But it may not be enough, and now Northeast, they've broken free of the contain, they're getting rid of the expansions, or retaking some of their own. Economically, they're basically even, but they also have the reclaim on top of that, and I have had it for the last couple minutes. So, for now, it's looking very grim for GBC. Another another Reaver goes down. Phantom's coming in. Should be able to get a few easy shots of their own. Oh, gotta be careful. Like, wait, that's... I'm just saying careful of the Gremlin. That is Cabin Boy's Gremlin. Help them to get rid of all these drones. Yeah, with Rakhtir Phantom, there's not a whole lot that's been built up to deal with this. I mean, you think... You know, that's largely an army that Raiders could deal with. There are some Reavers built up, but... That... There's not a whole lot of them. Like, there's not enough that, you know, a couple dozen glaives wouldn't be able to wipe everything out. But we're not seeing that. At all. Now, 3v3, of course, that kind of makes sense you maybe wouldn't, because... Raiders just aren't as popular, especially on a small map where their speed doesn't give them that much of an advantage when you have three opponents to deal with. Oh, speaking of phantoms taking out commanders, Masper's commander goes down to one, having stepped just outside of their defense forest. They could not survive that. Now this defense forest is pretty much done for. Although we are actually seeing the mass glaives and mass fleas too. So these phantoms have got to be careful because that is exactly the army I was seeing to have counter them. Glaives coming in from northeast. Steel Blue looking to deal with that, and that will work okay. Alright, well, yeah, Steel Blue pointing out that Flimby really made... The game this northwest early really saved them, and indeed it did. That was... Like, northeast never really had a massive economic disadvantage, despite losing half the map, simply because they had... They had at least that corner. That was well stocked, so... With that, you know, they were able to rebuild the army we see now. But as it stands, Glaive's still coming in from, from Masper. Still managing to do a bit of damage. Still managed to break the lines. But it's not a huge... It's not a huge advantage. Just kind of makes the eastern side a bit less of a threat. Western side, similar thing happening with Fleas getting rid of all defensers. And the rogues won't be able to do much more besides, so this actually isn't a bad defense coming in here from GBC. I mean, they're still falling behind economically, though. Northeast, again, has had a reasonably okay economy. They're able to get tons of reclaim off of this. Play is still trying to find some sort of target to work from here. Getting rid of, you know, getting rid of some rogues, maybe getting rid of Mason. Not really getting rid of the reclaiming forces, while at the same time being pushed back hard by all the Scorchers coming in here from Flumby. This is a brilliant defense from Northeast team. Oh! I'm... That... Well, okay, then just, yeah, get rid of the Fusion Reactor. Just shoot it a few times, and then it blows up. Then it kills everything else around it. So that breaks the entire... I mean, that broke the entire defense force. Whatever was left from the Southeast is now gone, thanks to the Fusion Reactor dying. And that's that. The southeast has fallen. Southwest is... Or the western expansion is kind of... It's basically fallen. India Ray's trying to take it back, but it's not looking promising. 
So brilliantly done there. Northeast team just looks to be on mop up duty now. Oh, also people asking when this game was played. It was actually played a. When was it played? It was played a little over a month ago. They. Yeah, it was a, I guess it was a request that was in the pipe for a while for some people. I, there, I have someone who has been requesting a lot of games, and they hadn't been for a while because I'd been basically on break for a month. And so once they noticed I came back, they went, hey, there's all these cool games, which I guess they just had in their back pocket the whole time. At any rate, back to the game, and back to... Ooh, back to Scorchers having a really tough time actually getting in and dealing any damage, thanks to puppies. And now the contain has reversed. It's a little bit more... A little bit better backed up than the contain off the crab rush earlier in the game, but... You now the tables have turned. Scorcher coming in, looking to find any free targets it can. Does find a pylon. Should be able to take that out. I think it'll die in the process. Nope. But it does prompt everything else to go down, and that is it. Towel throw as GBC is unable to, to make that crab rush turn into anything other than a completely ineffective fire, er, spire. It was just... Put the crab up there, and then it gets all paralyzed, and then that's it. Or disarmed, rather, and then that's it. It's just done. That kind of defined the game. I still think they could have won if they had just had a better backup force behind that to deal with the racketeers specifically. But we didn't see that. So that is that. That was just a very good demonstration of how to break out of a contain, especially when you have some extra expansion over to the side. Continuing to provide that little extra bit of of economy. So yeah, with that, that was that was GBC getting schooled on how contains work. Anyway, next game and last game for today, or last replay rather, is going to be Steel Blue again against Reposter on on Krubic Plains, a map which I haven't seen in a long time. Possibly for good reason, but we will find out. This one was played a bit more recently in, in the last week. So anyway, that is going to be the next game. Until then, stay tuned, and we'll be back very shortly.